Hello everybody, Scott Golden here, Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome to those of you who are new, welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is we take social, psychological, and emotional and coaching topics and we try to break them down as simply and easily as we can on a consistent basis, usually every day. Uh, we do that here in an audio format and hopefully there's something in the 230 or so audios we have that is helpful to you. Please like, subscribe, comment below. So today we're going to talk about seven things, I think it's seven, uh, that will lead you to negative mental health experiences. And so these are some common things that I've seen in my 13 years as a life coach that are, that are common. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So the first is dwelling on the past. And I know this is hard for a lot of people to understand, but the past is irrelevant unless you can use it to make a new internal story that leads you to be able to move forward toward some form of progress, no matter how small. What I mean by the past being irrelevant is it's already happened, it's over. So unless it can be used as a leverage point, there's no point in going back and rehashing it, rethinking it, talking about it, constantly going in that direction. Now, I understand that it is useful to relate stories about what we've been through and all of that. And there's a place for that in every interpersonal relationship. There's a place for that in conversation. But it should be a percentage, I would say, around at maximum 20 to 25% of a conversation. Because it won't change no matter how many times you tell it. And so for people that ruminate on the past you're really setting yourself up for an eventual breakdown because when the past doesn't change and you're reliving it and you're reliving the pain of it and you're reliving the uh, the stress and you're reliving the hardship and you're not getting resolution, you're actually setting yourself up for anxiety and depression related to something you cannot change. The next is having closed-minded beliefs or belief systems. So this is a really difficult thing, and, and I'm sorry, my, my acid reflux is acting up a little bit, but this is a really difficult thing um, for lots of people to handle, and the reason is actually pretty simple. Um, when we look at formulating ideas, concepts, preferences, we are pretty hard line. We're wired to be like, no, this is the way it is, boom, bam, and done. And so the best way to approach larger social topics, larger life topics, is to approach it from a neutral space. This is what I believe, and I don't imagine I will change my beliefs, but I'm open to somebody showing me evidence of something that is different than what I believe and integrating that into how I view the world. In that way, you're always learning, always having the potential to grow, and always not getting stuck in antiquated thoughts. Now, this is something sim can, that can be simple as views on politics, religion, relationships, all sorts of things. It's not that you can't have your own personal preferences, but the belief that another way is possible and could work for a group of people, could work for a person, or could work for you, will give you a more well-rounded life. So, the next one is constantly needing attention. So, we all want social interaction, we all want connectedness, we all, well, almost all of us want to be in some form of social group, community, and or relationship, be it romantic or platonic. However, when the center of your life is the desire for attention consistently, and you can't be happy, or well, or comfortable, unless you get it and you change yourself and kind of become a, an emotional chameleon to receive the attention you seek, that creates problems. Number one, sooner or later, people will see through you and they'll start to question your authenticity. Number two, the benefit you get from the bump in attention will dissipate and eliminate itself over time. Because what you're really seeking is consistency, 
the attention gives you the rush, but the rush will go less and less and less the longer this particular behavior goes on. When you're constantly seeking, seeking attention or validation, what you're really saying is, I'm not sure that I'm good enough, and you need to look at your self-image rather than looking outside of yourself for solutions. So the next is awfulizing. When we awfulize, we say things like, things will never get better for me. I will never get uh, the job I want, the relationship I want, the financial status I want. I will always have to struggle. I will always be alone. And so awfulization is the polar extremes of belief. And awfulization will always lead to mental breakdown because when someone holds a, a set of rigid beliefs, sooner or later, when those beliefs are either proven to be the perception of truth for that person or proven to be false for everyone else but them or proven to be false for them if, if it's something they hold to be a positive belief, they will begin to go, my world has been shattered. What do I do? How do I cope? How do I get through this? And if they don't have coping mechanisms already in place, and usually rigid people have a very hard time developing coping mechanisms because coping mechanisms allows us to, or encourages us to be fluid, it encourages us to be more accepting and open. Rigid beliefs are, are very closed off. So it's hard for a rigid person to have a good coping mechanism system and that creates problems. So the next is, how often do you take a day for your physical, mental, and emotional health? Now, that doesn't mean uh, getting to the point where anytime something gets difficult, you check out and take a mental health day, but at the same time, one to two days a month. So even if we say, you know, let's say 12 to 20 times a year, to take even a half day, and say, I'm going to pamper myself for three hours, or I'm going to um, go lay by the pool, or I'm going to look at nature, or I'm going to do something I normally wouldn't do that forces me to relax, forces me to reflect, and forces me to realize my place in the world, you will benefit from that every time. Now, I would even say that consistent mental and emotional health check-in days um, and, and I pick I pick once a month just as a marker that I use, and I'm, I'm in this field. Um, and, and I use it because I know that if I go more than a month, especially now, and there were times I didn't, and there were times I literally broke myself, um, <laughs> which is not a good thing. But, you know, when you do that too, you realize where you're overburdened, you realize where you're out of balance, and that can be extremely helpful. But... I would say these are actually just as valuable, if not more valuable, than a longer form vacation for 10 days, two weeks, whatever it is, because the vacation, while it's a great respite and some really awesome memories, when it's over, you have to go kind of like a camel with long droughts in between, whereas if you have a marker set for every two weeks or every month or every six weeks or whatever it is, and you know you're going to take time for yourself, you know you're going to take a day, then you at least have that to look forward to when things are overwhelming. The next is expectations. So expectations, boundaries, and preferences are things that many people get confused. Preferences are things that one prefers. Boundaries are things that one does not desire to tolerate. Expectations are things that one would like and often unfortunately we force them onto others without meaning to or realizing we're forcing them onto others truthfully and here's the hard part there's an interesting reality where there's a connection between expectations here's what i expect and here's my boundary here's what here's if you don't do a then i won't do b then we don't need to be dealing with each other so expectations and boundaries go hand in hand. However, many people make the misstep of believing that other people have the same 
boundaries and expectations that they do or similar without having the conversations and the cognitive assumption that your partner, your best friend, your family, your boss, whomever views the world the way you do is one of the most, and I hesitate to say this, but one of the most ignorant oftentimes beliefs that exist because why should someone else see the world the way you do if you haven't explained why you see it that way and the assumption that out of the entire world of 7 billion people that someone's going to see things exactly the way you do is statistically unlikely. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't come to compromise. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have conversations. But assuming that somebody, be it a partner or a friend or whomever, sees the world the way you do without having a conversation is setting oneself up for breakdown and failure. The last one is not getting adequate rest. Adequate rest can be a vacation. Adequate rest can be nightly sleep. Adequate rest can be taking breaks throughout a day or throughout a work week. But making sure that you build into every day, both your work day and your off time, time to get proper restful occasion, both sleeping and non, is necessary for your mental health. So hopefully this is helpful to you and... Um, we will be back with more and until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment till next time, everybody.